Hey guys, and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to troubleshoot a gas furnace. This particular one, the blower is not working, and we're gonna troubleshoot how to figure out if it is the blower itself, or if it is the control board or something else. There's only two things that we're gonna need to diagnose this furnace. One is a voltmeter, and two is a simple jumper wire. I do not recommend doing this if you're not familiar with electricity. I will not be held liable if you electrocute yourself. We're going to be working with live voltage, testing different things. So make sure you're being super cautious if you're gonna try and diagnose your furnace yourself. This is a very common train, older model furnace, but these same instructions will apply to many different furnaces. So I'm gonna show you how we can jump this at the control board to get this to act as if we're calling for heat. Okay, so right down here, we notice our control board and we have all of these wires here that go up to the thermostat. Now those tell the furnace what to do. So in our, in our application here, R is going to be our 24 volt supply. W is going to be the call for heat. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a jumper wire, just like this one, and we're just gonna hook one alligator clip up to R and we're gonna hook one up to W. So before this furnace will run, even though we have our jumpers connected here, we need to jump the safety switch. Now, a couple of things you can do here is you can put a piece of tape over this, like electrical tape, but sometimes that'll come undone. And what I like to do is just put a little zip screw right here, just thread it in a little bit, and that will hold it in place. All right, so our furnace uh, inducer motor just came on. Notice what happens here. Our glow rod has come on. This unit uh, will kick on, but the fan never kicks on. So as we see, we have ignition. Now after about 30 seconds or so, our fan should come on. But what will end up happening is the fan won't come on and the limit switch will turn the whole furnace down. Customer said, you know, they smelt some kind of burning smell and it was because the the heat exchanger was getting so hot that um, it was producing these weird smells and the fan was never coming on so at this point we know that the blower motor is not coming on so what i like to do first of all is after the power is off just spin this motor if it's free to spin then the odds of that motor being good is pretty good if it has a lot of resistance when you go in there and try to spin it your motor is probably bad. Also, if you hear like a humming noise when that fan is supposed to come on, that's a good indicator that the fan just is kind of locked up. Okay, so if you've checked and you don't have any resistance, the next thing I would check is the capacitor. We've already checked this one, but the procedure is to uh, take the housing off, then to discharge it by using an, an insulated screwdriver. Just um, touch the two leads together and that will discharge the capacitor and then check it uh, with a multimeter to see if it has the proper values. Like I said, I've already checked this one. Now you'll notice that there's a bunch of wires that go to the motor. Now for a standard furnace, you'll have the neutral. All of the neutrals will go on these uh, neutral pins. They're all located in the same spot. So our one white wire is going over there to the neutral. And then we have these other four wires here that go down to the control board. If you look on the board, you will see labels for these wires. Now, as you can see right here, yellow is our heat wire. So we're gonna pull this wire off. This is the wire that's going to get voltage when we call for heat. So the control board should send 120 volts to that pin between that pin and neutral, any of those neutral lugs there. Now, before we do that test, this safety switch here has 110 volts. So what we can do is we can take this wire off. This is the wire that goes to the transformer. And we can bypass that by connecting our heat wire from the motor directly to this power source. So notice what happens when I touch these together. fan comes on, everything is normal with the fan and the capacitor. So that's a good way to check your fan. 
something that I recently learned, um, that's a very easy test to just verify that the fan is good before pulling it out and making any assumptions. Okay, so we're gonna hook our power back up here. We know that the blower motor is good and that the capacitor is good because we just jumped it. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn the furnace back on with this disconnected and we're gonna check for voltage at the heat pin and the neutral. So let's go ahead and do that. So what we're gonna do again is we're gonna jump R and W. See the inducer motor kicks on. Now we're gonna put one lead here on the heat pin where that yellow wire used to go. And we're gonna put one on our neutral pin. Now notice what happens about 30 seconds after our flame comes on. So the hot surface igniter is on, we have ignition. We're gonna give this about 30 seconds. We'll hear an audible click, the solenoid. There we have it, 115 volts. Now, one would think that 115 volts is sufficient. As you can see, we're st holding steady at 115 volts. But if I take my heat uh, wire off of the motor and I plug it in, as we can see, nothing happens. And we've already verified that the motor is good and the capacitor. So that would indicate that this control board is bad it's not sending enough voltage to the motor. Now here's something that we can double check to verify that. Right up here we see our transformer. Now the blue and red wires, I'll put my leads on those. And as you'll see, you've got 28 volts. That's your low voltage side. Now on the top, as you can see, we have 122 volts. So something is happening in this board. We're getting 122 volts and we're only getting 115 to the motor and that's not enough to turn it on. Well, there you have it, folks. That is how to diagnose a bad control board. Uh, there's many different electrical gremlins that, are, um, that can be found on these units. So this is just one scenario, but I thought it might be helpful for you. If you wanna see the video on how to replace a control board, it's a very easy process. Check out this video right here and we'll show you step-by-step -step how to replace a furnace control board. Until next time, you guys be safe. Later.